So we finally got a date for No More Heroes 3, the 27th of August of 2021. And yeah, I think No More Heroes 3 news is pretty much what made the Nintendo Direct a big thing for me. I would have just been happy with a release date, but we got way more than we actually hoped for, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, we got some gameplay, and on Suda's Twitter, we got voice actors and pictures of characters. And yeah, so this video, I'm just going to be going through my predictions of the things that's going to be happening in No More Heroes 3. Some of my predictions will be for the bosses, for the main characters, for other bonus stuff, some gameplay, and just some things I hope are added into the game. I'll put some timestamps in this video, so if you want to skip to a specific part, then there you go. So as of recording this, they also announced the physical version of No More Heroes 1 and 2. So I'm also going to be talking about this in the video. I'm going to be going for all the No More Heroes 3 stuff first, but if you want to skip straight to the 1 and 2 physical releases, then just skip to this part in the video. I'll put like a timestamp or something, I don't know. First up, I'm going to be going through my boss predictions. So for my boss predictions, for the last boss, we're obviously going to be fighting Fu. He's like the prince, and he was mentioned in Travis Strikes again. And he's been built up as this big Thanos level threat. So yeah, he's obviously going to be the big bad guy of this game. And then obviously we're getting the eight other aliens that come with Fu in the return trailer. Some of them we already have gameplay of, some of them we don't. Before the direct, I was going to say Mr. Black Hole and Mr. Wormhole, as they're aliens who was in Travis Strikes again, and it's pretty obvious that they would return as they work with Fu. But it turns out Mr. Black Hole and Mr. Wormhole are part of the eight aliens that return with Fu. So this one here is Mr. Black Hole, and you can kind of tell because if you compare this picture to his picture in Travis Strikes again, the pattern on his wrestling mask is the pattern that's on like the weird aliens, I don't know, waist if you want to call it that. But I'm not sure who Mr. Wormhole is because we haven't been told any info on that. Personally, I would say this guy is Mr. Wormhole because he kind of looks similar to Black Hole in like the facial kind of way. But I guess this guy could also have a chance of being Mr. Wormhole because his body has the same pattern as Mr. Wormhole's resting mask in Travis Strikes again, if you want to go with the same theme. So that's nine bosses so far. Obviously, Destroy Man is going to return, like always. This guy just doesn't die. He's been in No More Heroes 1 and 2, and now he's one boss again. Thankfully, I hate the second game's boss. <laughs> but yeah, he's in the most recent trailer, and we've also got some concept out of him. It's going to be pretty interesting to see Destroy Man again. And I think Suda even joked about, like, if there was a 4, he would return in No More Heroes 4. We've also got the return of Kimmy Howell. She's from No More Heroes 2. She's, like, Travis's super fangirl, yandere kind of girl who wants to kill Travis. We've got some concept art of her, and yeah. We got this big, huge spiked thing that is in space, and... One of Travis's robot machines is fighting against it. I'm, for now, I'm going to say this is going to be its own boss because it just looks cool. In my personal opinion, I kind of think it's like the return of Death and Drive from Travis Strikes Again. But this could also be Mr. Black Hole because in a trailer, Mr. Black Hole is kind of the same boss fight setup in a way, even though he also has gameplay of him fighting on Earth. I don't know. Maybe there's different fights of him. But yeah, I'm going to say Death and Drive return and this is going to be him as a boss. If not, then he's a separate boss. So that's already 12 or 13 bosses, depending. Then we got Henry Cooldown, who's obviously got a new design and is a lot different than before. And in Trevor Strait's again, he's acting different. And then there's probably some more bosses we don't know about and hasn't been mentioned. Then there's theories of Midori Midorikawa, her being a boss because there's that girl who's fighting Travis in one of the trailers. I don't know who she is but people think it's going to be her. 
I kind of expected she'd be on Travis's side or something, so I'm not sure, so I'm not going to say who this is. And on the boss fights, there could possibly be Damon. Thankfully, Max Middleman is voicing Damon. He's the English voice actor of Saitama and Ryuji from Persona 5. He could be a boss. But yeah, that's my predictions for the boss fights in this game. For the main characters and characters we'll possibly play as, we've also got Travis, we've got the return of Bad Man, we've got Shinobu, we've got the return of Bad Girl because she was revived from the dead in Travis Strikes again. It's yet to be seen if she has actually come on Travis's side or not, but I think she will be. And thankfully they brought back the voice actor of Bad Girl, because I think the voice actress retired and hasn't done voice acting in a while. And they brought her back in Travis Strikes again just to do dog noises. So it's good to see that she's going to be, well, hopefully speaking lines in No More Heroes 3 again. Then there's Yuhara from Travis Strikes Again. He helps Travis and they become friends. And it's confirmed that he's going to be returning. And he's going to be the one bringing Midori with him. So there's that. And I don't know, Midori might be part of their team. I'm not sure. Henry Cooldown could possibly, depending on how things go with him. I'm not sure if he's like brainwashed or anything, but if they sort him out, he could possibly be on their side. Then there's Notorious. He's the world champion and said to be a superhero on the work side. He could return and I don't know if he'll be a boss, but he seems like a good guy and wanted to help Travis in previous games. So he could return. And as this is about a lot of superheroes and aliens, then this would be a good theme for him. And maybe there might even be like some characters in Shinobu's dojo, because she has a dojo now. Oh yeah, and there's Jean the cat, who can for some reason talk now. Hopefully with the little mini game again where you can play with Jean and Stroker and stuff. Oh yeah, and also on your side, the main character side, there's obviously going to be Sylvia. And we also have Dr. Naomi. She's probably, you know, going to be on Travis's side like the previous games. Hopefully she'll invent some new beam katanas for Travis to use, so that'll be quite fun. And I think it's safe to assume that she's the one who created Travis's robot suits that are shown in all the trailers. Like the original white and yellow sort of design, the blue one, and the one that's in space. I don't know if they're like all the same suit or if he has different suits. Maybe, and hopefully, Glastonbury from No More Heroes 2 could return. Because I'd very much like to see that. I'm wondering if Travis will be able to have more than one Beam Katana again. I'm sure he will. So he's obviously going to have his Bloodberry. That's like his signature main Beam Katana. His Rose Nasty could return. The Sabaki could return. Because that's a pretty nice Beam Katana. And maybe he might even get some new beam katanas like say after he kills Kimmy he could pick hers up and get a double-ended beam katana and maybe it could have a mix of no more heroes one and two in there so you go back to the motel room to get multiple beam katanas and put them on your belt and then switch between them there and then if you don't want them anymore go back and put them in the drawer in your motel room the game is confirmed to be open world so that's something and all the shirts from Travis Strikes again it's gonna be in no more heroes 3 Obviously we'll get some new shirts and probably returning ones from 1 and 2. Uh, I'm glad they brought back the mini games. And like they're actually 3D and not pixelated like No More Heroes 2. And they're essential now, which I kind of liked because it stops you from just rushing through the game. I'm looking forward to more of the soundtrack because we've already got Red Orca and some of their music. But I'm looking forward to some of the other themes. Hopefully they'll give us like a collector's edition. Because that'd be quite cool. I think they will because on Amazon it says standard edition. So I think it's safe to assume that there'll be a collector's edition. Expect the game to be about, you know, £50 or $60 standard Switch game price. I don't know about collector's edition. I'm guessing £80 or $90 sort of price. Just my guess anyway. Thankfully you won't have to play all of Suda's other games to understand the story. They'll probably just be there as like a reference if you want to understand all the references in Easter eggs. Though to understand the story, all you've got to do is just play 1, 2 and Travis Strikes again and you're good. With all these plot lines and 
things we don't know and connections to other pseudo games in a way. I'm hoping that this would be quite a long game and I'm just guessing here but I have a feeling that this will be the longest game in the series, like the most boss fights and more cutscenes and story to go through. And hopefully after this we'll get a No More Heroes 4, because I don't know how they could up the stakes in 3, but it'd be very cool to see a 4 if we ever get that. Oh yeah, and an extra storyline for this game. The government could try to come back and get Travis, because in Travis Strikes again, they tried to do all that cloning stuff, so Travis and Badman had to go to the CIA to stop them. That could carry on into No More Heroes 3, we'll have to see. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about 1 and 2 physical releases on Switch. I actually thought this wouldn't happen, but now I'm glad it actually has happened. But yeah, I hate having to buy the same game twice. I'm going to quickly talk about what they got here. No More Heroes 1, Standard Edition. Then they also got No More Heroes 2 Desperate Struggle, Standard Edition. Then they got No More Heroes 1 Collector's Edition, so you get the box, the game, an art book, a steel book, two posters, Bizarre Jelly and the No More Heroes, Travis and Sylvia, and then the original soundtrack. What I like here is the standard game case is like based on the American release of the original Wii box art in a way. Well, the steel book is based from the European and Japanese cover. Then we also got No More Heroes 2 Desperate Struggle Collector's Edition. So we've got the box, the standard game, the art book, the steel book, two posters, one of just of Sylvia and another of Travis and Sylvia and Shinobu, and the No More Heroes 2 soundtrack. What I like here is also the standard physical release is based on the No More Heroes 2 box art, and then the steel book is the Hopper Edition which is basically the collector's edition cover, but on the still book, so that's quite nice. So the two standard physicals, they're about $30 each. The two physical limited editions are $60 each. And then they got No More Heroes, the Destroy Edition, which is basically one and two limited edition physical, and that's $130. And yeah, they both join up to make a big picture on the front cover and the side, I quite like that. And they also got a replica Santa Destroy flag. So I'm obviously going to go for this one because I want both of them. It's going to be awesome. And obviously I'll do an unboxing of this on my channel if I hopefully can get it. And I will because, you know, I love No More Heroes. Limited run games are very good. I enjoy them and the things they make. They always have good quality. And hopefully this is what No More Heroes 3's limited edition could be, if it has one. Which I'm assuming it will now, this is a thing. So I just hope they go with limited run games again, and we get something similar like this for No More Heroes 3. Oh yeah, and also recently Suda announced Silver 2425 for Switch. I guess that's all I wanted to talk about now, and get things out, and just talk about the game a little bit. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.